What are the seven bottles of bourbon that I just haven't had on my shelf in a very long time? Let's find out. What's going on everybody? Nathan here with The Everyday Drinker bringing you guys a brand new video. Now I just got back from my bachelor party from Nashville, Tennessee and I had an absolute blast. And I had this one question lingering in the back of my mind while I was out there. What bottles of bourbon on my shelf have I not had or poured myself in a very long time? Well, I came up with the conclusion and I picked those seven bottles of bourbon when I got back and it's very surprising what bottles of bourbon I have not had. Now, before we get into the bottles though, we are less than 100 subscribers away from 3,000 subscribers. And like I keep saying, at 3,000 subscribers, I'm letting you know what the 5,000 subscriber giveaway is going to be. So make sure you are dropping that subscribe, getting all your buddies to drop that subscribe so that I can let you know what that 5,000 subscriber giveaway is going to be. Also, check out the Patreon link is down below, but without further ado, let's get into bottle number one that I just have not poured myself in a very long time. Bottle number one goes to Larceny Small Batch, and this is bottled at 92 proof, and I just think there are a couple of bottles of bourbon that are on my shelf that I tend to go to more often than not that are right around this same proof point. You guys know how much I love the Larceny Barrel Strength offerings. I have every single one from last year, and I'm starting the collection from this year. I always go towards those when I'm looking for something that's barrel strength, but if I'm looking for a lower proof bottle of bourbon, this is not the weeded bourbon that I tend to go to. Bottle number two. Bottle number two goes to the Widow Jane 10 year. Now this is the same exact bourbon that goes into the Widow Jane Decadence, but the Widow Jane Decadence in my opinion is just all around better than this. It's a little bit more complex. It's got a little bit more sweetness. If I'm looking for just a traditional 10 year aged bottle of bourbon, there's two other ones that I tend to go to a little bit more often than not nowadays, which are the Russell's Reserve 10 year, which is $35 compared to roughly around 70 and the Eagle Rare 10 year, which is around that $40 mark now pushing for some people. I do tend to find it in that $35 range in my area when I do see it. And for $70, I just think that this one is a little bit lackluster. So spend that little bit extra money, maybe $15 more, roughly around an $85 mark when that decadence does come out. At the fall time, pick that decadence up over the Widow Jade tenure. Bottle number three. Bottle number three goes to Jack Daniels Bonded. I've had this bottle for just about a year now. I think that this bottle was released right around this time last year. And I enjoyed it, but I think the Whiskey Advocate got a little bit wrong saying that this was the whiskey of the year. Little lackluster in my opinion. If I'm looking for that Jack Daniels flavor, I'm going towards the big bad boy right there, the barrel, single barrel, barrel strength bottle. You're getting all that Jack Daniels, beautiful flavor notes, everything that Jack Daniels whiskey, Tennessee whiskey, bourbon, whatever you want to call it, has. Now, one thing that I learned on my Nashville trip, we did take a trip down to Lynchburg, uh, Tennessee. We did the Jack Daniels tour. Lady could have been wrong, lady could have been right. I'm not quite sure, but I'm going to re relay the information that I heard to you. Now, if you're looking for the Jack Daniels Sinatra, look no further. This right here is everything that Sinatra is. It's aged in the same exact barrels the Jack Daniels Sinatra is. It's bonded, it's four years old, and it's 10 proof points higher than the Sinatra. So I, I tasted the Sinatra while I was there. It's this, it is 100% this. Now the cool thing about the Sinatra blend is the they core out some of the barrel of the Sinatra blend so that it, the, the, the whiskey is more interactive with the barrel. It's not your traditional staved barrel. From what I heard, this is aged in those exact same barrels. Could be right, could be wrong. If you're looking for Sinatra blend, look no further. Don't spend 200 bucks, spend 35. Bottle number four goes to a bottle that I will never pour myself again. I don't know what it is about that Texas whiskey, the Texas bourbon that I just don't enjoy. I think it might be a little bit too over oaked. You know, that bourbon saturates into the barrel like you wouldn't believe because of how hot it is down there. I just think it has gives it a weird funk that I just don't enjoy. But hey, they make it because people do enjoy it, but this is just not my cup of tea. I will have this bottle on the shelf for people that want to experience a, te a Texas whiskey. So I will always have this on the shelf. It's not drain pourable, but it's just not me pourable. Bottle number five goes to a bottle that was one of my absolute first bottles of whiskey. 
first bottles of bourbon for that. And it was my first single barrel offering that I had ever picked up from a store. And I picked it up because it's a pretty bottle and I didn't know anything about it. So I got a little manhandled at the store and well, here it is, Bib and Tucker. Now, you can see that this bottle is roughly about halfway filled and that was all drank within the first month of getting this bottle of bourbon and not knowing what it is. This right here is 100% sourced from Dickel. It's 12 years aged Dickel, single barrel, slapped with a single barrel store label on it. And that's why I don't enjoy it. I don't enjoy a lot of the just straight Dickel offerings. I, it's some, most of the time I enjoy a Dickel blend, right? You know I like that barrel uh, bourbon products. Those are sourced with a Dickel blend. This right here is 100% Dickel and it is just super, super mineral. I don't really like that metallic flavor that this bottle of bourbon has to offer. And I will have this on the shelf because it is one of my first bottles of bourbon. It is my first single barrel, but I will most likely not be pouring myself this bottle again. Bottle number six. Bottle number six goes to Heaven's Door Double Barrel Whiskey. Now this is classified as a whiskey. It's not a bourbon because it is a blended whiskey. It's a blend of three different styles of whiskey. I'm going to assume that it is bourbon, rye, and American single malt, just like the Jack Daniels triple mash is. But the Jack Daniels triple mash is 10 times better than this right here. Both bottled on 100 proof, but this is a double barrel whiskey. So this goes into a second charred barrel aged in that for a given amount of time. And well, it's just not as good as other double barrel whiskeys. Now you have Many, many other offerings that are 10 times better, in my opinion. Woodford Double Oak. You've got the Old Forester 1910 Old Fine Whiskey. The Elijah Craig Toasted Barrel. The Penelope Single Barrel Toasted Barrel Strength Bottles are tenfold better than this bottle right here. And roughly the same price. So make sure you guys, if you're looking for a double barrel whiskey or a double barrel bourbon, those Penelope ones are the definite must to go to bottle of bourbon that you need to get for a double barrel whiskey. This one right here just doesn't do it for me. It's been like this. I've had this bottle for most likely a year now, and I just don't think I'm gonna be pouring myself a pour of this anytime soon. And bottle number seven. It's one that everybody loves. It's one that everybody hunts. But once they sip it for the first time, they realize it's just not all that. Blanton's Single Barrel. Now, this was my first Christmas gift from my fiance when I started to get into bourbon. Don't know how much she paid for it. She won't tell me but I know it's over MSRP because it was right before Christmas. So I know it was a little bit too high and I will never have her buy me a bottle of Blanton's or bourbon again that is over MSRP. This is just a little lackluster. You know, I will have this on the shelf. I have backups on backups of Blanton's because I pick it up because I would just, I personally, I'm trying to get all the horsies, not gonna lie, but I'm not spending over MSRP for the horsies. I also picked this up just to have it on the shelf for people to enjoy and see if they enjoy Blanton's because a lot of people, they, they're looking for it. They want to know what it tastes like. They want to know if it's worth it for them. Well, I've got the, I've got the Blanton's for you. And right here, I'm going to let you know it's not worth over MSRP. Don't spend 200. Don't spend 175. Don't spend 150. Don't spend 125. Don't spend a hundred dollars on this right here. It's not worth it. It's not, I don't even think it's worth the $65 price tag that it has on it. Maybe it's worth 50. But nonetheless, this bottle right here is just not one of those bottles that I have poured myself. It, I barely have it under the label line and I've had this bottle for almost a year and a half now. There you guys have it. Those are the seven bottles of bourbon that I have not poured myself in a very long time. And I don't know when I will go back to these bottles of bourbon. If you want to know what, bo what seven bottles of bourbon I always go to on my shelf, the ones that I enjoy all the time let me know down in the comments below also let me know down in the comments below what bottles of bourbon you haven't poured yourself in a long time on your shelves but until next time this has been nathan with the everyday drinker cheers